Hi there, this is Debbie with ArtByDebbie.com and I had a technique uh, and, and an idea to share with you today and what you're looking at is uh, a piece of actually drop cloth type canvas that um, you can buy real cheaply and then I just cut it into a, a rectangle and folded it in half and then originally it started out being um, I put it under my whatever I was working on it and it was waste paper and then I went back over it and started doing some designing on top of it and this is what I ended up with and this is going to be the cover of a book and I'm gonna put uh, probably file folder uh, material inside the front cover and the back cover and then cover that with uh, more fabric a solid color of fabric and so how I, I got to this um, I've got something under underneath this that I can show you that I'm working on now um, the, again this is just that this is just muslin actually from the fabric store a real thin a real nice to work on I love working on this stuff and all I've done here is just used um, some spray color. Um, I, I make my own glimmer mist with uh, liquid watercolor that you get in the kids section at the craft store, Michaels or Hobby Lobby or whichever one you go to. And it's a Crayola brand. And it's, it is liquid already. And then you, you can add more water to it. Or not and I use it full strength in a spray bottle and I put Perlex powder in with it and shake it up and it stays in this on this fabric I haven't I don't put a binder in with it because a lot of times I or most times I go over the top of things with uh, Mod Podge or you know heaven only knows what so um, what I was doing here um, was doing some designing on this and one of the trademarks that I've always ends up in my work is an is an eye of some kind and I've drawn one here and another idea that I like to do when I have just random color down like this is sometimes it can be intimidating you don't know really where to go with it or what to do with it so then I just uh, this is kind of a large marker but I'm gonna try this and see usually I do a real thin one but with these sharpies you can you know put light pressure and get a thin line and then I just start going around edges and what you end up with is actually something kind of neat at the end and it actually frames in areas for you to work on you can further embellish them um, or just seal it and go with it as it turns out after you outline these things and it's just a really relaxing technique something that's nice to do when you just want to do something that's kind of mindless really but this is the kind of abstract art that I enjoy doing the most it's serendipitous which I enjoy too um, no planning goes on here this is just all like freestyle skiing it's freestyle art my favorite kind and it's just doing these little simple things uh, many years ago when I first started doing art on a regular basis um, doing these little things is really builds uh, skill in a lot of different areas and the thing that I noticed with it too is that it gave me a lot of confidence in what I was doing and also it taught me that what we do when we're creating our art does not have to be perfect by any stretch of anyone's imagination this is just simply outlining smeared around color really that uh, a few colors have blended together and this raspberry color that's the dominant color is is really nice I I liked that 
and this black sharpie is a real real bold contrast to it and like right there I covered that pink up completely and that happens sometimes too and I just go with it I go with it mistakes and all and in fact some would say there are no mistakes when you're making your art and I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist um, something that I'm trying to overcome because boy it sure uses up a lot of energy when everything has to be perfect so here I've just gone around the edges uh, very simply and it ends up looking uh, like a real roughly edge and then I'll go in after this and put down more color too and with Sharpies you can do that you can put it over the top of color or um, continue on with your color after you've used your Sharpies and I think wrong color what I wanted to do is add a color here and what I'm gonna do here is what I don't normally do but hey why not experiment a little bit and just use this canvas as my my palette just like a like you would a you know a piece of paper towel or something And then I'm just putting a darker color around here. This is Black Cherry and it's folk art, I believe. Yeah, that's folk art. And it says Black Cherry on it. And I've had it a really long time. I have so much paint that uh, certain colors just seem to last a long time, even though I do use them, which is, makes it kind of nice. And again, we're, I'm not doing a lot of planning here at all. I do keep a jar of water right next to me, real handy, and then go over this with some water. Dilute the color a little bit. It, it acts more like watercolor when you do that, of course. Duh. Uh, I just realized adding water to it does make it more like watercolor. That makes perfect sense. So we're just going over this. We're going over the edge where I just did the Sharpie and it seems to be taking the water just fine. Not bleeding. I'm about to cover my chandelier stamp up there but again that's okay too. You know if you you uh, get aggressive with your paintbrush and you cover something up no big deal. You can go back in with a, a metallic ink or something and and do or emboss it on there even. Heat emboss your chandelier back on there. So I used to really fret and stew and worry about things when I was creating art in the beginning and I've really gotten over that which is really rather freeing. And I'm uh, just uh, working color in here and just letting it do whatever it wants to do and coming back put some water over here get some more color going there and also another thing to point out about this too is if you notice this blue uh, this real nice bright blue that was achieved by using one of my favorite things which is this is a a woodless colored pencil they're my very favorite colored pencil um, they they're almost like um, an oil pastel really but what they are is just pure pigment and they go down so nicely and and this is just right over the top of fabric it did really well and what I did was I applied this the color to the fabric and I can do this again just darken it a little bit and after I applied it and this was just in some open areas that didn't get the color and I just took those and decided to use those fill them in with this blue so then after I applied the color I went back with 
my finger and just burnished it in. Just back and forth, blending, blending, blending. I do that a lot when I'm creating my art. Um, I started being a, uh, as a painter. Um, I began with oil paints. And uh, I do enjoy oil, but it takes so long to cure that I switch to acrylic because I like to just, you know, keep moving on and, and keep creating. So there you can see how that makes it uh, kind of a distressed look there when you use it just, and I just use my finger. Um, or you could use a rag. I keep a, a towel next to me when I'm working too. Um, so that could be used in the same way. So, You got things piling up over here. Sorry about that. Um, but there's a lot of different things, of course, that you can do with this this kind of a technique. And with this real dark area over here, then I can go back over this um, after it dries with some gesso and calm that dark down a little bit. And uh, and I can also let's try. Hold on, let me find it. Let's try some water, see what that does. Sometimes it just does really neat things and other times it doesn't do anything but just wet the fabric, which it looks like that's what it's doing this time. But in any case, now I've got it real wet, I'll blot it off too and there's color on the towel, you know, that I can go ahead and remove. So what I have found um, from all of the art journaling that I've done over the years is to just keep working at it, keep working it, keep working it, and and then sit back and look at it, and then you you know at this point I think what I want to do is go ahead and cut this down to the uh, shape that I want because it's going to be a book cover for a journal, for an art journal. So what I think I'll do is go ahead and let this dry probably overnight and then um, I will add more color in here where it, where it is. But you know this is something else too to uh, mention when we're doing our art. I am one of these people that I am, I prescribe to the philosophy of more is more. And my art is uh, real colorful and full of, of pattern and, and line and uh, shapes and design. And, um, but I've been, you know, really trying to teach myself the value of negative space. That's a real challenge for me because I'm really wanting to fill in these white areas. But if we leave those white areas there, I might put some color along the edge here. But then this part here and over in here and down in the corner over here and up here, I'll leave it alone. I'll leave it the color that it is as negative space. And then I'm going to go in once it's cut down to the uh, book cover size, then I'm going to go in and uh, punch some holes and do some beading on it. I'm going to sew some beads on and uh, do some other kind of sewing too because I've, I've done needlework in the past so I enjoy adding that to especially a fabric journal cover so I'll be adding some of that on there and I'll be putting a bead at the end of each of the eyelashes too. So um, I'll do that in, a, in another video and that'll do it for today. And I hope you enjoyed watching and uh, comment and uh, rate for me and give me some feedback and tell me what you think of it. And uh, y'all have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.